Oh, right, okay. Oh, hi guys. I'm Darth Browner, and welcome to my vlog. Now, just now, I was just playing the Green Hill Zone on Sonic 1, which is awesome. You've got to love the 2D Sonic games. Now, I'm going to be talking about in this vlog the awesomeness that are the 2D Sonic games, namely Sonic 1, 2, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and we've got to mention Sonic CD as well. Come on, it would be silly not to. Now, where to begin? I would go with the fact that the 2D Sonic games have got one thing in common. They have stood the test of time fantastically well. Now, I've been playing, as you saw, the Green Hills in on Sonic 1, and um, even 20 odd years on later, it is still superb. You know, the music, the gameplay, and I'm not just saying this for the one zone, I'm saying it for all the Sonic games that are on the Mega Drive, in the Mega Drive era, plus Sonic CD as well. So, they've stood the test of time, and I think a lot of them are infinitely better than some of the games out there now, so the appeal is quite lasting. Now, Sonic 1 and the sequels have something fantastically awesome in common. They have variety. They have, well for me they have variety, I mean, it depends on you guys, we leave comments below if you want to discuss any points. And the variety in them is absolutely incredible. I'm not going to lie, but each game feels more different to the last. Yes, you've got your basic gameplay mechanics, but there's always something different to the last game. So, if it's not the zones, the new zones changing, then it's something else like a new character, be it Metal Sonic or Knuckles or Tails or Amy. Um, it's always something like that. And you can't forget the variety in the boss fights, like with Robotnik, the different machines that he uses, and the entire fact that he always has some sort of giant mechanical contraption at the end. If it's not the compressors in the final zone of Sonic 1, it's the giant big ass robot in Sonic 2 and that bizarre massive fingered contraption, you know what I mean, in Sonic 3 and Knuckles at the end of the Death Egg Zone. So the special um, reason I like them is because of nostalgia as well. You cannot beat the nostalgia that goes with Sonic games. It's like Mario. You know, you've got the nostalgia that surrounds Mario quite a lot. You've got the nostalgia for different reasons. It surrounds Sonic the Hedgehog. So they're both awesome in their own rights, as it were. Now, I want to mention the special stages. You've got them all in the Sonic games. So in Sonic 1, you've got... Uh, trippy maze with the really bizarre, weirdy backgrounds, and then in Sonic 2, you've got the half pipe, you've got the bombs, otherwise, you lose rings, and in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, you've got the collect all of them spears and avoid the red ones to get the Chaos Emeralds. Of course, Sonic CD has um, time zone, time stones instead of Chaos Emeralds. And in, to get them, it's pretty cool how you get them, because what you have to do is you have to fight UFOs and destroy them, which is pretty awesome. And I would love it if Sonic Mania, if that ended up being a special stage or something completely new for that matter, um, which has been released this year. So it would be pretty cool to see, hopefully, again. So you have to collect 50 rings in Sonic 1 and CD, jump through the goalpost at the end, jump, get into the giant ring, and the goalposts in Sonic 2, you have to get 50 rings, jump through these stars, pretty sweet, to be honest with you, you can do it in more than once in an act. And Sonic 3 and Knuckles, what you did was you had to find these giant big ass rings and they were hidden in the stages. And that was pretty cool because it definitely encouraged you to do some exploring, which I thought was pretty sweet, if you ask me. Now, I've got to mention the music in the Sonic games. It is absolutely superb in each of the games. So, you've got Starlight Zone and Scrap Brain Zone. They're two of my favourites from Sonic 1, plus Spring Yard Zone as well. Sonic 2, you've got your chemical plant, 
your Mystic Cave, your Metropolis Zone, and you've got the boss theme as well, which is one of my favourites, I've got to say. Then you've got Sonic 3 and Knuckles, you've got awesome tunes like the Hydro City Zone Act 2, the Ice Cap Zone Act 1, Flying Battery Zone Act 1 and 2, Mushroom Hill Zone. So you've got your variety of Oh yeah, I mentioned not to mention, um, Stardust Speedway and Sonic uh, CD, pretty sick beats in there, especially the past theme and Palm Tree Panic as well. Can't forget to mention those, I don't know why I nearly did, but hey ho. And if, what music do you like? Let me know in the comments below after this video. Now I've been scouring Facebook asking a question on my Facebook page link for that is in the link descriptions below please give it a like and a follow that would be pretty sweet and I've been asking people what is their favourite zone in the Sonic game and I've had some pretty sweet responses and um, I'm pretty impressed so what I have done is I've developed with the help of my really good mate Jazz is a montage of the favourite zones with uh, what people have thought of them. And here's the first part of our journey. We are in the Spring Yard Zone, baby! And this was chosen by my mate Matt, who commented. Pretty awesome if you ask me. Good choice. The reason he likes it is because of the music. So I'm going to shut up for a bit and then listen to the music. And there you have it. How cool is that theme? I'm going to elaborate and um, explain my reasons for liking this zone as well. As I'm just trotting through, as you do. I really like this zone because, well, as mentioned, the music. But I also like it because of the fact that it was the originator of the um, fun bouncy zones. So you've got your Casino Nights and your Casino Paradises and Carnival Nights and such. It was the originator. It was the precursor to all of them. It's the one that started it all off. Now, interesting fact for all of you. Spring Yard Zone in the Sonic 1 Beta was originally known as the Sparkling Zone. So there's a bit of info for you. And here's the boss. Well, as I'm playing through this zone, I figured I might as well... Um, Tackle the boss as well. You'll see this guy again in a few weeks' time. Ah, oh, Robotnik. Do you think that's going to stop me? Come on, pop it over here. That's the badger. Effortlessly done. So, where do we go next then? And now we've ended up in the Labyrinth Zone at 3. Um, you're probably wondering what the hell I'm doing here. Well, my friend Luke enjoys this level. As um, he also wanted me to try and take down Robotnik because of how notoriously difficult this zone is and whilst it's not my favourite zone I must admit um, I've got to say the music's cool anyway Luke this is for you I'm going to prove that I can do this all that's been laid down, etc. Ha! 
brilliant. And on that note, I wonder where we're going to go to next in our favourite zone segment. Oh, cool, the Emerald Hill Zone. Now, my friend Bodge mentioned this as one of his favourite zones. And what do you like about this zone I hear all of you ask? Well, he quite liked the background. Said he could happily play a game with that background throughout the whole game. And looking at it, and you can, get a better picture. It looks pretty impressive actually, you know, the clouds and the water with the reflection bouncing off and those hills in the background. They're pretty cool actually, aren't they? So I do see where he's coming from. Now, it's very similar to Green Hill Zone from Sonic 1 and I'm going to throw in my tuppence worth and just say that my reasoning for liking this one as well is because of its similarity and familiarity with the Green Hill Zone that it's in added frats as I knew you just got hit but there you have it I wonder where we'll go next I hear all of you ask so Chemical Plant Zone is our next area then now Lee, Sean and Matt all have this down as their favourite zone and here it is. The music was the most common recurring reason why this zone was liked. Um, so I'll be quite very quick then that you will have a little sort of listen. Now I like that the music as well. Um, quite fast paced, has that sense of urgency. That's not the real, the the only reason why I like it. Which that's that's not the only reason I like it though. I quite like it because of the fact that it keeps the same level of intensity and speed that the Emerald Hill Zone had. Yeah, I quite like Robotnik. I just think the level of challenge is just perfect. And that's his ass kicked. So, the real question is, which zone is next on our journey through the favourite zones? I hear you all And ask. we're in the Casino Night Zone. Now, again, like Chemical Plant, this is picked by more than one person. And the people that picked it were Ben and Paul. Now Paul went on to say as well that he really got the pinball-y sections. Can't say I blame him, they're my favourite part of the zone as well. I usually see this one as a natural success to the spring yard zone. So, with all the old bouncing things with pinball added in. I think this is going to be one of the best zones. It's up there with Metropolis and Chemical Plant is one of the best zones in Sonic 2, in my opinion, anyway. Um, I'm going to elaborate a little bit more myself and just say about how much I enjoyed the cityscape background. I mean, the background's pretty impressive. It makes you feel like you're in somewhere like Vegas or something. You know, the place that never sleeps. And if you've played Sonic 4, you'll notice how much, how similar Casino Street Zone in that game is. But this has been and always will be the best or amusement slash bouncy zone. I'm gonna leave Casino Night though without throwing in the boss, who's one of the most fun in a Sonic game. You're on a pinball table. And you're fighting Robotnik, how cool is that? 
This is going to be my favourite boss battle in Sonic 2, apart from Chemical Plant. This does make a return in Sonic 4 to an extent as well. Shoot. I don't want to happen. Yay! That's what got it done. Now before we go on to the next zone, the next zone is being done by a friend of mine and just want to say a big hand to Charles when now that he's gonna be focusing on his favourite zone as part of a collaboration with Darth Browner. Hi, I'm Chaz Tastic at Chaz Tastic Gaming. Thanks for having me, Darth Browner. Now, I can't let a classic Sonic list be made without addressing my favourite level, Metropolis Zone in Sonic 2. Metropolis is the 8th zone in Sonic 2 and is notable for being the only zone in the game to contain 3 acts. The zone has industrialisation gone crazy with the background feeling as though it's all part of one unified machine. The environment is quick to remind you that you are never safe and should always be vigilant of the death traps around every corner. These death traps include crushers, conveyor belts, lava and these fucking things. But even with all these hazards it does not stop the level from being a fair challenge. After all, you've made it through 7 stages at this point, it is assumed that you have a strong understanding of the game's mechanics and have honed in the skills required to beat the stage. The music uses somewhat of a dull and repetitive repetitive rhythm section that almost feels like the whirring of the large machine in the background, but the track is given its own character with the rock and guitar sections. Well, as close as a Mega Drive can approximate the sound of an electric guitar, it is no secret that this is my favourite Sonic 2 track and I find myself tapping my toes every time I hear it. I mentioned before that the stage has three acts, but all other stages have two. This is because one of the acts was originally due to be part of the cut level Genocide City Zone. Yes. Genocide City was going to be the name of a level in a kid's game. Lastly, I want to address what does the stage name mean? What is a metropolis? It is described by Dictionary.com as a large and busy city, though it doesn't look very much like a city. And even the Sonic Wiki describes the zone as a metropolis in name only by this point. However, I disagree with this, so I dug a little deeper to get some answers. I found my answer in the 1927 German silent movie Metropolis. The movie holds the accolade of being the first serious sci-fi movie, showing both the good and bad sides of industrial expansion. This is the setting of the movie, the grand metropolis, the city of light. As you can see, so full of life, cars rushing everywhere, a far cry from our Sonic 2 metropolis. Or is it? Someone needs to keep the lights on in a city like this, and below the city of light is the workplace of the poor, with death traps and hazards abound, just like our Sonic level. My theory is the zone is, as the name implies, a metropolis, but not the beautiful skyline and bustling cities that you initially think of, but the city's engine room, where the less fortunate draw blood, sweat and tears for the more privileged. The woodland critters are in place of the poor, Robotnik is the more privileged. But hey, that's just a theory. A Sonic theory. Thanks a lot Chad for that brilliant video on the Metropolis Zone and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Now be sure to check out Chaz's YouTube channel, his various other pages for awesome content. I definitely recommend checking him out for sure. The links to them are all in the descriptions below. Now as for the next zone that we're currently on, we're on the Mushroom Hill Zone. As submitted by Rob. Now Rob likes it because of the music, which I totally get. It's nice. I like it. It's nice and chilled, and just sounds really, really cool. If I'm being honest with you. But I don't know what it is with you guys choosing a lot of zones that I really enjoy playing. But you guys seem to pick the zones that I like as well, coincidentally. I like it because um, it's big, it's varied, it's lush, and there's not much room for criticism that I can give really. It's one of those zones which is just really fun to play on. And besides, when you've got um, someone like Sonic who's a fun guy to bounce along and play with, 
then you're on to a winner, really, aren't you? I mean, that does look pretty unusual, doesn't that? Knew it'd be robot there. This is really impressive, like, graphically. This is one of the best boss fights in the game. I would say, honestly. And the chasing as well. This is a bit of a prelude to Sonic Advance 2, where you fight all the bosses by chasing them like this. And it's a lot harder. This is just like, well, almost pre the precedes it. So where do we go next from here then, friends? Well, therein lies the question. It's my favourite zone in the entire series. You can give me any zone you like. The next zone is my very, very, very favourite. And you'll see in a few short moments as to why and which one it is. And we're in the flying battery zone. This is my personal favourite zone. So what do I like about the Flying Battery Zone, I hear all of you lovely people asking me. The variety. For starters, I mean thankfully this is not all set indoors. It's not an indoor zone by any stretch of the imagination. Oh no. Got some outdoorsy bits and they can be pretty brutal if you're not careful. We've got the right mixture of difficulty, so game is like, well, we're not going to be too hard on this level, nor we're going to be too difficult. So imagine, I would say, the Wing Fortress Zone, across to the Metropolis Zone, a little bit, not much, but a little bit. And you've got the Flying Battery Zone. I mean, you can think about the music. I'll just keep quiet a little bit whilst I'm doing this so you can all listen. So come on guys, who remembers this? These obstacles were in the Spring Yard Zone, way back from Sonic 1. So you've got two boss battles in the Flying Battery Zone, which makes a bit of a change really. The first is more of a, let's just avoid the hell out of that giant laser beam of doom. And the second, the monkey, 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 Now for the next zone, it looks like we're in the ice cap zone, baby. Now Sean um, said this is one of his more favourite levels, and what can I say? One of the best levels in Sonic 3 of the Sonic and Knuckles segment, so let's do some playing of the ice cap zone. But 
What makes the ice cap zone so good, I hear you ask? Well, music is definitely one of the things, but it's not just that. It was the snowball section at the start, and I'd go as far as saying, judging from people's comments, that they enjoyed the challenge. As do I, to be honest with you. And so our final of the favourite zones takes us to the Sky Sanctuary Zone. Oh look, it's the Death Egg! Now then, this zone was picked as a favourite by Darren, my good friend. Now what does Darren like about this then? I hear all of you asking me. But what he likes is the fact that it sets up a finale of sorts with Robotnik and about the challenge that it presents. And I will say I totally disagree with him on that. It's the bosses. There's Mecha Sonic. Surely you recognise this boss. Being from Sonic 1, Robotnik's first bot that's vehicle in the Green Hill Zone. Oh cool, that is right. Something else Darren likes about the level is the fact that it's diverse enough to keep you playing. He's got that right. You've got the vines, you've got the crumbling blocks, and of course the spike hazards as well. Oh, flip. Ooh, look! We have another boss. This is from the Metropolis Zone. And here be the final of the three bosses. Now this is a bit of a throwback to Sonic 2's penultimate boss where you fight Mecha Sonic. Bank him and then that will wrap things up quite nicely. Easy peasy then and squeezy. And that my friends brings us to the end of our journey in the favourite zone. That's the selection of the favourite zones. I'm sure some of it must have brought up some fond memories for you guys. I do want to say a special thank you to Chaz for working really hard on his Metropolis Zone segment. It's been awesome doing a collaboration with him. Um, I would definitely recommend checking his YouTube channel out and his Facebook page, his Instagram and Twitter pages out as well. Definitely worth it. Lots of really cool content on there. Um, to you guys who commented on the Facebook, I definitely want to thank you guys as well um, for your contribution and I want to make a special shout out to TRL Beats and Instrumentals for producing the superb uh, background music whilst I've been talking on the sofa so big shout out um, to him as well it's been pretty cool and don't forget to give me a good old subscribe uh, links to my Facebook, Instagram Twitter and such are in the description below. So, this has been Darth Browner. Thank you so much for watching, and see you on the next video. Ciao for now. See you soon, guys.